So getting back into the main Death Metal series, we have some interesting events that happen this issue, guys. This is issue number four, and a lot of those events pretty much come from Superboy Prime. Yes, he showed up at Trade Crisis number one, which we did cover, but this is where Scott Snyder really shows how he's going to write Superboy Prime. And you guys can find out my opinions throughout the video. I'd like to know your opinions on this issue down below. If you guys are not caught up on this whole Death Metal series, I'll link down in the description pretty much my Death Metal playlist. You go and get caught up on those issues, and then come back, alright? It should be totally lost if you're not caught up. But yeah, guys, let's check out Death Mel number four. We begin on Earth in like the midst of like a battle, right? And we have Sergeant Rock. He says, Hey, down there, it's you. Where the hell you been, kiddo? We've been looking for you. We're in the cake now, thickest part. That could the battle where it could slice either way. And so everybody, everybody is leaving it out there on that hill. Now you, you look right here at me, not at the chaos. The blood and fire, you look close into this pretty face, these baby greens, and know that you're safe. You, you're with me, Uncle Rock. I'm taking a liking of you, your grits, and I ain't gonna let anything happen to you. You got that? And then he says, hey, watch the cigarette. Somebody almost steps on a cigarette, and then he says, what was I saying? And we see in the background, we see Kyle Rayner, we see Blue Beetle, we see all this big battle going on. That's when uh, somebody walks by and says, ah, oh, damn it, come on, Rock, quit talking to a ghost. And Sergeant Rock says, you just keep your eyes on the bow. Don't mind him, but since you took up with a different pl platoon from his spell, let's compare intel and see if it squares up. And what Sergeant Rock mostly says here, he starts pretty much telling what's happened up to this point. Mostly like the tie-ins that we've been covering. Like Multiverse's End. Like we had the old Green Lanterns, they go to take out, down all the antennas, take down Perpetua. We had the Flashes, Wally West and Jake Garrick. And Barry Allen, who must be chased by the Darkest Night. And Darkest Night wants Wally West. Then we have the Trinity, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, they went to the Dark Multiverse, and Batman got stuck in Crisis on Infinite Earths, Wonder Woman got stuck on Infinite Crisis, she actually met Superboy Prime, Superman got stuck in Final Crisis right up against, like, Dark Side, and these different, like, um, Dark Multiverse versions of these Crisis, pretty much the villains won, alright? What we see next, we see Ambush Bug, and Ambush Bug says, Rock, enough, and Rock says, Alright, we gotta move, kid. But all you really need to know is that the Crisis Worlds, one woman and company expect to find, weren't the ones they got. Not by a long shot. Now, what we see next is on Crisis on Infinite Earths, we see Batman. He's in pretty much by the Anti Monitor. He says, uh, hello? One woman, Superman, if you can hear me through the Alpha Boxes, turn back. These worlds, they're all wrong. They're not the Crisis as we knew them. There's some kind of dark versions. Versions where, no. And then anti Mario comes by. You were gonna say, versions of the crisis where you lost. And that's correct, Batman. I won against you and your friends long ago. Listen to me. Whatever alternate form of the anti monitor you are, son, you need to give that back. And anti monitor says, I'm the real Mobius, Dark Knight. All this is as real as it gets. Now we shift to Final Crisis, and we see all these Superman above. The real Superman just pinning him down. They say, stay down. And Superman says, no, where are the heroes? Where are a sees Dark Side? In Dark Side, we have pretty much Green Lantern, uh, Cassandra K. Batgirl, Supergirl, Blue Devil, Detective Chimp, all kneeling before Dark Side. And Dark, Dark Side says, there's no one here but Dark Side, Kryptonian. I control with anti life, anything that breathes. I speak through everything in this place. If you wish to speak to me, kneel. Superman says, uh, your energy signature, you're the real dark side. And dark side says, I am, by your perception. I entered this world only a month ago. But here, I have ruled for aeons. I am an old god by now, with only one task left to secure this reality. Would you like to know what it is? And Superman says, please, listen to me. There's still time to defeat Perpetua and her minions. It's not over yet. And dark side says, no, it's not over. But it will be. All of the years of patience, of anticipation. This ends when you are submerged in this fire pit, Kryptonian, and merge my final son. And Superman says, no, we can still win. Don't do this. And Darkseid says, shh, don't worry, old foe. When you wake for the first time in your life, you'll know true happiness. Now, Wonder Woman wakes up. She straps this antenna in the pretty much infinite crisis world. And she says, what in the... And Superboy Prime says, say hello to Alexander Luther. And she's right by the skeleton of Alexander Luther. And he says, or goodbye, rather. He had no place here. This world is one of hope, of goodness after all. I can't wait to show it to you, Diana. And one woman says, whatever you create here, it's a lie, Superboy Prime. And that's what Superboy Prime says, no, Diana, it's a dream. Of what was, 
what should have been and now. And Natsui says, what will be again? And uh, Diana says, Prime, uh, listen, listen to me. And Super Prime says, no, you listen for once. Listen to this world as I listen to yours. First from the antenna you strapped to, then from my prison, the source wall. For years I listened, you know why I heard in the voices of your people? Anger, fear, the ugliest music in the universe. And what he goes on to say is, I heard enough of it. So now you hear my world, uh, Diana, the voices of all the people. They're happy, they're faithful. Why? Because they have heroes whose goodness inspires them who keep evil at bay, who vanish their right. I listen to them day and night, millions of voices. It's like the symphony of hope. And Diana says, Prime, please, whatever the one who last promised you, whatever he came to you with, and Superboy Prime says, he didn't come to me, I went to him. When you broke the source wall and freed me, I saw the chaos coming. To make sure there might be one world where heroes remained, I saw him out. I was the one who made the promises, and all I had to give you, him, was you. So, Super Prime made this deal with the Bound Last or the Dark Knight. If he gives um, pretty much Wonder Woman to the Dark Knight, then he gets to keep this world that he always wanted. Super Prime believes in that mentality that hey, kill the villains, vanish all the evil, and then we have a good world. We have happiness. We have real heroes instead of heroes that pretty much keep all these villains alive. And what we see next is the land of Gotham. Flash is running, says faster, he's gay on us. And Jake Eric says, the speed force is growing out, Barry. And Barry says, I feel it too. Well, if you can make contact with the Castle Bat team, tell them we're running out of time. They need to direct the crisis energy to the Mobius chair so it can power you up. And Wally says, I'm trying. Jaro, Jaro, come in. And then we see Swamp Thing says, keep going, Harley. Now we ship back and we saw a train crisis with Swamp Thing, Harley, Jonah Hex, and Jaro stuck behind pretty much at Castle Bat, and they got attacked by the Robin King. Now, Harley Quinn says, no, Hex is still alive back there, or alive-ish. We can't just leave him with that little hell spawn. He doesn't deserve that. And that's what Jarl says, guys, the Flashes, they're almost out of time. What do I tell them? And Swamp Thing says, there, there's nothing to tell them. Diana has not returned, and there's no place safe to you. And the Robin King says, excuse me, I think you might have dropped this back there. And you see the head of Jonah Hex. Now, that's when Harley Quinn says, just let Hex go, there's nothing left of him to hurt. And Robin King says, I feel that's kind of a negative way of looking at things, Harleen. Maybe I'm just young and naive, but I like to think there's always something left to hurt. And Harley Quinn says, what are you? And Robin King says, this knife was forced by Neron, Lord of Hell. He pulls out this knife, and then he says, if you get stabbed with it and you're a sinner, you go straight to Masak Mob Deal, the lowest, highest pit down there, where demons take the form of those you sinned against and peel your flesh of every morning. The neat thing is, it grows back every night. And Harley Quinn says, please, he doesn't. Joe Hex says, it's, it's okay, kid, I, I got to come in, but you, you don't. Please run before... And then Robin King stabs Joan Hex in the head with a knife. And Harley Quinn says, I'll kill you. She runs toward Robin King. Swamp Thing says, Jaro, stop her. And Jaro says, on it. And that's when um, Harley Quinn says, let me go. And Robin King says, ah, you can let her go, guys. Let's just go and give this back to her. And he pulls out a mallet. He says, it's the mallet she tried to kill me with on my world. Hey, I wanted to ask you, I have this theory on why you use these things. See, the one who laughs, he's shown me a lot of the dark multiverse. I mean a lot, haha, -ha. now, heroes, fears, take the form of evil versions of themselves. By contrast, villains' fears take the form of good versions of themselves, which are no fun to bring here at all. So ever wonder why you never see a Harley who laughs? And he says, your parents knew it, Harley and Quinzel. In folklore, a Harley Quinn started as a minion of the devil. So my theory is, you use these things to bash the truth away. That deep down, you're so much more evil than the Joker. And Swamp Thing says, enough. Jaro, release her. Hurry, that won't hold him for long. Jaro, any sign of Diana, Diana and her team? And Jaro says, nothing. I, I can feel the Alfred boxes down there, but they don't seem to be moving. Well, what the hell do you think is going on down there? And Swamp Thing says, I don't know, but I pray they find their way home and fast. Now, that's when Superboy Prime, back in the Infinite Crisis world, says, begin countdown. And Diana says, don't do this, Prime. Superboy Prime says, 
You're the one who did this, Diana. You left Wall exposed so that the one who lasts could snuff out the only threat to him. You set the lanterns to dismantle the antenna powering Perpetua so that all Christ's energy could be redirected to a new target from this place. You gave him everything he needed. And could you just say, me, I did nothing but do what I've done for years. Watch and wait for you and your friends to fail. Moments from now, although all the Alpha boxes will be destroyed, and I'll direct all Christ's energy to the one who laughs, and he'll make these worlds real and lasting. And one woman says, if you empower that monster, and Super Prime says, you're all monsters. You know as a boy I felt so lucky just to live in a time when you all walked the earth. These heroes, we're the best of us. You fought bad guys, and you won. It was simple. I felt so lucky to be a boy living in the shadow of these idols. But you all changed. Now my purpose is to guard the essence of what you were, what you're supposed to be. I'm saving you, Diana, saving you all. If making a deal with the devil is the only way to do that, then so be it. Now we see Batman back in the Christ and Infinite World says, well, what are you and doing to me? And uh, Antimonitor says, not doing, undoing. You're the last bit of matter in existence. Once you're gone, I can finally devolve. Then all will be still. Batman says, no, no, no I'm still, I am. And then he disappears. And Antimonitor says, no. You're not. Now, Superman back in the Final Crisis world says, No, stop this. And he's being put into this fire pit. He says, Yuxas, please. Which is very frightening. Guys, this part, when is Superman just said Yuxas? Dark Side's real name. That just hit me. When I was reading this, I was like, Ooh, that. You know he's in trouble. And you know he's feeling, fe like, fearing for his life when he's saying Yuxas. And Dark Side says, Superman is. And he crushes it. Now, we go back to Super Prime. And he says, standing by, target the bad and last. And what the ten uh, antenna was saying, antenna ray in 30 seconds, Superboy. So pretty much saying, okay, 30 seconds and everything will go as planned. And Diana says, look, I'll admit, you're right. The world isn't what it used to be, but that's because the only constant out there, Prime, is change. To be alive is to be a part of one connected system that's always changing. Matter in constant motion, life is ever cycling. It can be sad and hard. The answer isn't controlling it with anti-life or destroying it with anti-matter. The answer isn't to hold back change. We have to accept it, engage it, while always, always staying true to ourselves. We may look different. The challenges we face may be darker, but we're still hopeful, all of us. And then Tan says, 10 seconds, 9. And she says, Prime, please, just picture something for me. I want you to picture a multiverse where all worlds exist, an infinite multiverse, each Earth unique, all connected. You can have a world like this, but it won't be alone or something built at the expense of others. There's room for it all. One doesn't have to win over the other. We can all win together. That's the dream, Prime, the real one. And then he hits her into like a wall because she got freed. And then Tess says, Ray to fire three, two, one. One woman, Super Prime, they clash and it says antenna, ready to fire. But Super Prime still has to trigger it. Now, what we see next is one woman says, What good is a world of hope if it's born of evil and death? And you see anti monarchy he won. You go back to a final crisis world, he won. Superman is now a dark side. It's actually a pretty wicked image. And Wonder Woman says, you can still stop this, though. You want to shatter reality with one punch. Shatter the antenna. Undo these worlds. Use the Alfred box to redirect the Christ energy of Wally. Please, together we, and Silver Prime says, enough. And he hits her by the neck. And we see back uh, pretty much Wally West. He's on, like, the Moby's chair. And that's when Jake Eric says, we can't keep ahead of him. Whatever's going to happen needs to uh, happen right now. Now, we go back and we see Super Bear Prime says, you talk about this endless multiverse. But all this, that means that another world could destroy ours. That nothing would be safe. It, it'll all just be some shot in the dark. And Wonder Woman says, you're right. Uh, but it, isn't that all he is? And Super Bear Prime says, what? And Wonder Woman says, Superman. All he is... Uh, is shy in the dark and Super Prime looks, but then he screams and punches into the wall. And what we see next is that Super Prime showing the ranks. One woman convinced him. Now, one woman, as she goes up out of the dark multiverse to so Super Prime, Superman, Batman, she says, Jaro, can you hear us? We're headed back. We left Dark Side Antimonitor behind, but we got Super Prime with us. Jaro and Jaro says, I'm here. Got you. But you need to hustle. The flashes are out of time. Now, Wonder Woman says, Prime, target Wally, hurry. And uh, Super Prime says, doing it, channeling all Christ's energy, now. They all show up, show up, and Super Prime says, we're back. And Diana says, we did it. She says, we, and then we see Wally. He says, guys, I don't think it worked. And he sees back in his DC Rebirth costume. And this, I don't really like this. Like, come on. We literally, it's female, we did this whole thing, 
uh, being nice to Wally, getting back to his roots, getting back to his original costume with like the white eyes. But then he just goes back to normal. Like, come on. I, I didn't really like this part. But you see Wally's in the Moby's chair still. And he has the DC Rebirth uh, costume on. You see Barry, Jay Garrick, Harley, Swamp Thing. They all think that they lost. Now, Diana says, no, it didn't. And Harley says, why the hell not? And then out of the shadows comes the darkest night. He says, because before you found it, you and got them. I rigged the Moby's chair. You redirect all power to me. And Diana says, no, 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 no. And Dark Knight says, yes, you gave me everything I needed to remake the multiverse in my own image. So let me be the first to welcome you to the last 52. And that's how we close out Death Metal number four. So guys, that was Death Metal number four. And it was all right, all right? Like, like some of it was really awesome. I did really like Superboy Prime. I like how Scott Snyder writes him, how he wants a world where pretty much the heroes don't like take down the villains. It's simple like that. Every, everybody's happy. I like that. It's really, it actually goes by what he is as a character we all knew about. Like in past certain like um, times that he showed up just out of the blue once in a while, he did act in character, but here he actually acts like Superboy Prime. And the whole fight between him and Wonder Woman was epic. It was really awesome. And see him join the Justice League, it was a little abrupt, but it was still pretty cool too. I think that's awesome. Nice teaming up with Batman, Wonder Woman, Superman. Like, that's really great. And just Superboy Prime, drawn by uh, pretty much Greg Capallo, it looks amazing, guys. See him fight off Wonder Woman, he does like the punch. It was really awesome. It's, it's my bet, like favorite part in the entire issue, alright? I just really like it. But now to the whole Superman Dark Side thing, that was cool too, but I want more of it. Like the scenes we had with Superman Dark Side were really awesome. Seeing Superman just get put in that fire, it was really like it, it was messed up. It actually like yeah, a lot of tension, a lot of suspense. And seeing Superman become a dark side before being saved, obviously. But I kind of want to see like an issue, just a one shot about that Final Crisis world and the Crisis on Infinite world. Because the Crisis on Infinite world, where we saw Batman and the Anti Monitor, though it was quick, it's still that Anti Monitor, like that little Mobius, like the young Mobius. He was very threatening and being like, oh, well, goodbye, Batman. It was just that simple. I like that. Now, with the whole, like, Robin King, he showed up, took down Joe and Hex. Those things were okay. The art looked great. Like, yes, the art was top-notch throughout. Like, Greg Apollo, amazing artwork. But that was, see, yeah, I feel like Robin King just went on and on. Like, hey, let's talk about Harley who laughs. Let's talk about pretty much Joe and Hex. Oh, how I'm gonna hurt him more. It just felt like Robin, Robin King was, like, blow, like pretty much boasting a little bit. And I didn't really care for it. I was like, you know what? I'll go back to Superboy Prime and Diana, because that's the most interesting stuff in the issue. Now, the ending of the issue with The Darkest Night, that just came out of nowhere. I, I feel like Scott Snyder, his endings are always hit or miss, alright? Sometimes they're awesome endings that can be excited for the next issue, but then sometimes just kind of like, alright, that feels a little forced. Now, with this ending, the final page, we see Darkest Night just show up and be like, Hey, you thought you won? Yeah, no you didn't. I actually, you know, pulled a Batman move. That was, that's what we were calling. He just tricked him somehow. Uh, shit, somehow rigged the Mobius chair, which, how? How? Because it's Batman? That's the only freaking explanation we got. Because he's Batman. That, that's it. So he rigged the Mobius chair, and now he's like the last 52 worlds or something like that. Which we'll see how that is in the next issue. But I just didn't like the ending. It felt very forced. I liked all the Super Prime stuff. It was very, like, well paced. And then all of a sudden, this big revelation comes in, where Darkest Night is like, no, no, you lost, oh, I got this last 52 worlds, and I was just like, whatever, like, okay, the Darkest Night for me is just getting kinda, I don't know, I'm just getting kinda tired of him a little bit, alright, like, sometimes I like him, some of his lines the way he does, but here, it just felt like it was forced to get to the next section, or the next part in this big event. Where they could do a, a little better a pace, alright? That's all I can say. You guys tell me your thoughts on this issue down below. I'm overall gonna give it an 8.5 out of 10. I still enjoyed it. I love the Super Prime and Wonder Woman stuff, and the artwork was great. Just certain parts of it, it's mostly the ending, just felt really a, a little like abrupt and not the greatest ending to the issue. But yeah, guys, like the video, give it a big thumbs up on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe to my next Death Metal video. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching, and peace out.